Aren't you too? Yes. You very are. much He's so. So yeah. that very convincingly. Yeah. <laughs> very quickly. Well, obviously, rather more expert than I realised. And of wine, generally. Yeah. No, English wine's lovely. Uh, ben, thank you very much. Let's see, 7.21 the time now. It's taken over seven years to reach its destination, but today NASA's Dawn spacecraft is scheduled to enter the orbit of the largest body in the asteroid belt. At almost 600 miles across, Ceres is classified as a dwarf planet, and recent images have already revealed craters and unusual bright spots on its surface. To tell us a little more about the pioneering mission, planetary scientist Dr. Katrina Jackman joins us now from our London studio. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Can we start with some basic terminology so we all understand where we're looking exactly? Uh, the asteroid belt, where's that? So the asteroid belt is situated between Mars and Jupiter, so it marks the boundary between the inner four rocky planets and then the outer gas giants and ice giants. So it's taken us a while to get there. What are we going to see? Uh, uh, what, what do we know at this stage about Ceres? We don't know a great deal about it, actually, which is what makes it so exciting. So we know that Ceres is a dwarf planet, which in essence is a failed planet. So it fulfills two of the criteria to be a planet in that it's in orbit around the sun and that it has sufficient gravity such that it's pretty much round in shape but it hasn't cleared the area around it so it's surrounded by lots of other small bits of debris and lots of other asteroids we have had a chance to look at it on the way there and i guess we'll talk about the bright spots in a second but we have also had a chance to observe it with other telescopes for example the herschel space observatory looked at it in some detail last year but we're really excited because this is our first chance to have a proper up close view of the biggest object in the asteroid belt yes now you mentioned those those bright spots that have been we've seen from afar what well, now why are those so special what's the interest there well, they're completely out of character with the rest of the surface. So the rest of the surface is almost totally dark. It's a mixture of smooth regions and cratered regions. But initially, as the spacecraft was approaching, it saw what was just one single bright smudge. Then, as it went closer, it was able to resolve these two bright spots. And there are currently two theories as to what they might be. So one is that they might be the result of some kind of an impact. So another piece of asteroid impacting onto the surface, lifting off the top layer of the surface and revealing this shiny material underneath. Another option, which is equally exciting, is cryovolcanoes, and that's ice volcanoes. So there, there's a theory that Ceres, either now or at some point in the past, had a subsurface ocean. And so it could be the case that we're seeing icy volcanoes erupting from that subsurface ocean. So either option is pretty exciting for us. Yes, and just in terms of the practicalities, this, this will happen over the next few hours. What, what will actually happen to the, the, the craft itself? So what's happening right now is that the spacecraft is approaching Ceres, it's travelling at about the same speed, and it's not going to be a big fanfare, rather it's just going to be very gently captured by the gravity of the dwarf planet, and then it's going to go into a stable orbit about it, and then it's going to spend more than a year studying it from every angle, and we're going to get fantastic pictures back information about the geology, information about the composition, and ultimately information that's going to help us to answer fundamental questions about the solar system. So really, missions like Dawn help us to understand some of the key questions related to both our origin and our destiny. So that is where, we're, where we've come from and where we're going. So how the solar system formed and how planets like the Earth came to be as they are today. No, it's not going to land on the planet though, is it? No, it's not going to land. It's going to orbit, as I say, for a year or more. That's the nominal science phase. Pending funding and pending the amount of hydrazine propellant that's left on board, that mission may be extended. But that orbit is going to be rather stable because Ceres doesn't have a significant atmosphere, so it's not going to be dragging uh, the spacecraft down onto the surface. But we're going to get fantastic images from pretty close distances above the surface. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Catriona Jackman. Thank you uh, for your time this morning. So now thank you know. You. Cryovolcanoes. Cryovolcanoes. Who knew they existed? We'll see them in the, hopefully in the next few hours. So if any of those images emerge while we're on air this morning, of course, we'll keep you updated. Coming up in the next half hour, she's been making films for nearly.